Hi guys, my name is Dan, I'm a veterinarian, and today, anal gland abscesses or infections. Also, I'll go over what an anal gland is, where it is on the dog's body, and also, why they have an anal gland. A doggy has two anal glands. The anal glands, the way I tend to think about it, is they're like balloons. These glands sit right under the skin in the fat layer of the dog. When we're looking for the anal glands, they are right there where the anus or the poop comes out. So these glands are sitting at four o'clock and eight o'clock if you look directly at your dog's butt. These two locations are where the pet owner or you will notice if the anal gland is infected. So when you roll to the veterinary office, most clients, most pet owners, you are like, there is something wrong with my dog's butt. Because, you know, they're scooting, they're rubbing at it, it's bleeding. There can be all kinds of different things. You may notice if your doggy has an anal gland abscess or infection. The veterinarian will do a thorough physical, and then they're going to try to fix the problem for you. The thing is, we have to clean up the infection, and the way I want you to think about it, the way I think about it is, that balloon we talked about earlier, that balloon is the anal gland. And when that gland and that balloon ruptures, the balloon gets torn, and all the air, or in our case, anal gland secretions and infection, leak into the fat and the surrounding tissue. That's why it's so uncomfortable, and that's why the skin tears sometimes, because all this infection just erodes right through it. Now we have to fix that problem of the anal gland rupturing and tearing and clean the infection out. What we need to do, guys, we need to flush and clean the anal glands out. The veterinarian is going to gently roll the tissue next to the anal area, and that will allow the veterinarian to see the openings of the anal glands. So we have that little balloon, and the neck of the balloon runs up to the skin, and the veterinarian can actually see the little hole. The veterinarian will then use a curved tip syringe or a catheter or something to flush out the anal gland. We want to make sure the anal gland is patent or open. Once it's open, the anal gland can hopefully start to function normally again. But if we don't get it open and we leave it and just treat the infection, it may block up or continue to be blocked if we don't clean it out. So by flushing the anal gland out, if the anal gland is ruptured, the flushing will just drain right out through the open tissue. If it's not ruptured, we'll fill the balloon up, or the anal gland up, and then express it out. Fill it up, express it out. We're just going to clean everything up, make sure everything is open and functioning, and then the veterinarian is going to send your doggy home, or the doggy with the anal gland problem, with antibiotics, because it's an infection, and also with and anti-inflammatory, something for pain, and we may even get a fancy cone or collar. Because if we're looking at it and we're messing with it like nonstop, we need something to prevent the doggy from doing that. So if anal glands can have all these problems, why do dogs have them? Well, before dogs got domesticated and they just lived in our houses and, you know, slept in our beds and watched TV on our couches, they would run around in the wild and they would go poop, of course. When they went poop, the anal glands, that balloon, would empty and it would leak onto the poop. And that would scent the poop. So other doggies, or wolves, or we'll say doggies still, that came walking around would smell that and they would say, Oh, that's Franklin. Franklin is a two and a half year old. Uh, he's this breed. Um, he's a boy and he's a really cool guy. So let's go look for Franklin. So it was a way to identify and let other animals or other doggies or wolves know that they were around and if they wanted to come hang out or they didn't want to hang out. It kind of gave them an idea of who they were. Once we get healed up, guys, it's a really good idea to get follow up checks at the veterinarian to make sure the anal glands are healthy. Also, have the anal glands expressed rectally at the veterinary office to make sure they continue to be healthy. And, if we have long-term problems, a veterinarian may recommend removing the anal glands. This is something that can have serious side effects if done incorrectly. So the veterinarian will recommend a specialist to remove anal glands. So I hope this was really helpful, guys. If you have any questions about anal gland infections or anal gland expressions or anal glands in general, let me know. It's one of the most common things I see, and it's something that we should all be familiar with when it comes to a doggy's health.